Kaylin, Team USA is coming into this World Cup ranked number one, which is awesome. What are your personal expectations for Team USA this year? Oh, goodness. I, I hate talking about it because I'm Canadian, and it always infuriated me when I saw them in our group or we saw them in the semifinal because anytime I played them, we could never beat them. And I, I tweeted about this the other day, even with the men's program knocking out Canada of the Gold Cup. Americans are bred into the mentality of like a never die attitude. And it's something that always frustrated us as a nation because we're like, how do they do it? Even when they aren't playing good, they get results, they win World Cups. And it's the last two World Cups that they've won back to back. It's almost as if they start so slow and then they just grow into tournaments. It's because they have such a deep bet or deep bench, excuse me. Every other nation that goes up against them, I'm telling you, it's the most frustrating thing. <laughs> Secretly, and I am Canadian, like it, there would be nothing more amazing if they could do a three-peat. Like that is outrageous and unheard of. Um, but they just have so much depth on this squad and so many superstars. Speaking of depth, there's so many young players on the team. I'd love to know a little bit more about these fresh faces. So I want to ask you, who do you think is going to be the X Factor for Team USA and who's going to be the rising star, you oh. think? I think the X Factor has always been Alex Morgan. And I think especially since having her little baby girl, I need to know who her trainer is because she looks fitter, faster, and stronger. But you can see her performance in the NWSL. And I always come back to this mentality of the American team. They always have a player in the squad that leads, not maybe by that vocal communication, but just that presence. So I feel like her personality and her presence on the pitch is going to be that X Factor and obviously the goal scoring threat. Trinity Rodman, for me, I, I don't even feel like it's like a new and up and comer because she's so freaking good. Like I am having if I'm Blacko, I'm having her in my starting 11 game after game. It doesn't matter if she's carrying a knock, a little injury, a sprained ankle. Like I am wrapping her in bubble wrap leading in <laughs> up because she is her mentality, her focus, her drive, her goal scoring threat from set pieces, the left, the right. It literally doesn't matter where you play her in that front three. Um, and I just I just love everything she carries. It's this like, don't mess with me. Like, I, I love to see that in women athletes. And yeah, she's she's definitely very inspiring both on and off the pitch. We can't talk about the U.S. women's national team without discussing activism. Um, and Megan Rapino, she recently told us that she knows the U.S. women's national team has changed the game for the better. And no doubt activism is a major part of that. Perhaps one of the biggest impacts they've had is equal pay. Um, you know, USA has made progress on this front, but I know other countries are working hard for their fair share, including Canada. So, Kaylin, what is the latest on that battle between Canada and CSA? Yeah, um, your guess is as good as mine. Um, it's a frustrating one because I, I have to give so much credit to the U.S. women's national team. Like, without them winning the tournaments that they've done, the players having the voice, because you can win all the tournaments in the world that you want to win, but if you don't have players that are, you know, that fearless, that winning mentality, look, I don't care if I'm left off a roster for having a voice. Like as a female and as a mom now, I never really, you know, I was always like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to be left off the squad. I'm not going to say anything because I'm going to get in trouble on social media. And now I'm like, they're just so inspiring where you're like, yes, if they can do it, we can do it. We don't have to win a World Cup yeah. to speak up for what's right. Like, it is 2023, and the fact that we don't have equal pay in Canada, the discussions are still going on. I mean, we see our organization of our leaders in $15,000 suits, but yet we can't have a send-off game for Canada for the Women's right. World Cup, one of the biggest tournaments in the world, the biggest tournament in the world. It's like, it's such a head-scratcher to me, and I've had conversations with people at the CSA, and there's just, there's no transparency. There's no honesty. There's no communication, and, and I think that's the biggest thing is, yes, these women are fighting for equality, and equal pay but there's so much bigger than that and this is the, the part where I struggle where people are like can't women just be happy to represent their country and I'm like if you guys no. think this is just about the money you are the issue like these women are fighting for the future generation for your kids your you know your young women to come up into a system where they can get a proper flight not be sitting you know in economy going to the world cup not to right not have proper trainers because they don't have enough funding to send proper trainers to um, the World Cup. Like, it's just the little things that people don't understand. And they're representing our country. And that was one of my biggest honors is for representing my country over 100 times. Anytime you put on that Canadian jersey, it's this feeling of pride, this feeling of emotion, and this feeling like we're a country that's come together and 
for 90 minutes, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, family, friends, supporters are having the worst day ever. They can sit down on the couch, watch the game and forget about everything else in the world. And I think that's the truly the greatest power that athletes have is they can make you forget about something so terrible and make people come together in the best possible way. So this isn't about dividing that and the supporters of, you know, we're being selfish and like, just shut up and play. Like, no, it's not about that. It's, it's so much bigger. And I'm glad that our women, Christine Sinclair being the front runner of that, someone that's not very vocal has been very vocal about it. So, you know, I'm in this fight with them behind whatever they need me to tweet or have these conversations when at CSA at these FIFA events, um, I have it and they're really tough and awkward conversations, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm willing to put myself in that situation because they're willing to go out on the pitch with no home games, no proper, you know, games leading up to the biggest tournament in the world. So it is literally the least I can do. So there's group chats going on all over the place, but I, I do wish them the best, of, the best of luck at this World Cup because I hope they smash it. Just to be like, to see us say, hey, we can do it with nothing. I want to know a little bit about the other teams who could very well win the trophy. Uh, yeah. England's national team is in the headlines. So what makes them so special? Oh, the quality. I, I, this is the, the point that I was making before. Canada is the only top 10 team in the world with no domestic league. And this is what this is proving. England has gotten behind this women's program over the last, I would say, four to five years where you have Manchester United, Man City, Arsenal, West Ham, these big EPL clubs that are taking the women's team under that umbrella. So it's not an outside investor. It is a billion dollar company where they are giving the women the exact same playing field as the men's program. The nutritionists, the trainers, the training facilities, the shoes. And I know that sounds stupid when I say cleat, but like a lot of the players in NWSL are having to buy their own cleat straight out of college because they don't have sponsors. You know what I mean? So it's the little details and that allows these women to be like, I can play professional soccer, be a mom and raise a family because financially I'm okay. Whereas we didn't have that growing up in the NWSL. And that was one of the reasons why I retired because I wanted to be a mom. And, you know, I was ready to retire at that point, but there was, there was no structure in place of maternity leave. There was no structure in place of having, you know, healthcare. As soon as the NWSL season was done, your healthcare was gone. So it was, it's those little details where these women are getting paid good in Europe and getting paid well in England, getting taken care of and quite frankly are treated like the men. There's still definitely some stuff that needs to, you know, transpire to, to pan that out. But anyone that I've talked to on the England squad, like since winning the Euro, like professional men's players that played for like City, Manchester United, were texting the women, hey, we can't get tickets. Can you get us tickets to the match? That's like, so cool. That for me is like, when I was talking to some of the girls that were at Soccer Aid uh, the other weekend, I was like, that is so freaking cool for you to be like, right. I'm sorry, we have no tickets for you. And like the men were like cheering and chanting in the crowd. And I'm like, this is what it's about. Like the men's program are supporting the female program. They're like interacting. The men are tweeting about them, showing up at games, getting proper commentators, getting proper training grounds. Like it's exactly what you want to see. And I think the only issue with the 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 England squad is they've had so many unfortunate key injuries where yeah. they went from like great, great, great to like great. And I, I hope they do well because it completely transformed like the Americans have done when they did win the Euros, but they, they do have a lot of injuries. Germany, right behind USA, ranked number two. Do you think they're a legitimate threat to the US? Um, yes, it's because the Germans are very, like the mentality of the Germans is very similar to America that they show up in big tournaments. They have people on the team with big presence. They have people on the team that their mentality is like, this is no big deal. And because they were the forefront runners of having a women's domestic league, like that was the place where when I was playing, you wanted to go to Germany. It was the top league there or France. France they only really had three teams that were very competitive, like Paris, Lyon, but Germany, you had a load of teams that paid well, like, and just their development as well. Like they've always just gotten it right from the beginning and the development of, you know, the youth academies for the females in order to play the same way as like club and country. It's very different, like in Canada or the U S where you, you know, your grassroots, like it's just different coaches teaching you different things. Whereas in Germany, it's very like, 
this is what we want. This is how we want to play. And you kind of see that on both the men's and the female sides when it comes to the national team. So I feel like they have a good shot. I mean, you look at them in the Champions League. They're always in the final, always in the semifinal. And it's, you know, all those girls will be probably in and around the team for this or will be in uh, this World Cup. So, um, again, a team that's played in big venues, big crowds and can know how to deal with pressure. Who else do you think can give Rapino, Morgan, the rest of this squad trouble? Spain. I think Spain. Spain, Spain's one of those as well, where you have Alexia Puteas, who's just coming off injury, um, is, you know, Barcelona. You, you look at what Barcelona, Real Madrid, it's the same story. I feel like a broken record, but this is how important it is to have a good women's domestic league with good funders or good teams like Barcelona, like Real Madrid, that treat their women's teams like their men's teams. And Spain as well, like they play in front of amazing crowds. They're they're technically so good. And I mean, how many Champions Leagues have they won in the last four years? Like they're always in the final. I was at the final two years ago and got to watch one of their games before that midweek. And just how they play, I'm like, Jesus, like if I could play <laughs> as one of you guys when I played, I would be very, very happy. We've been uh, polling as many female footballers as possible, asking them who they think the GOAT of the game is. A lot of them have said Marta from Brazil. So who's your GOAT? GOAT, definitely for what she's done with the game. <laughs> but I have to go Christine Sinclair. Obviously, she's Canadian, but the woman... I honestly don't know how she's still running right now. Like she is, and I know everyone's like, why do you talk about age? Because it's freaking cool what you're doing at that age. Like I'm 35, I'll be 35 in the fall. I don't think I could run 20 minutes at a high intensity like <laughs> they do. So what she's doing at her age, being vocal off the pitch, she's changed the game. She's the top goal scorer on both male and female internationally. Like she is phenomenal. Marta is as well. I feel like there's a handful where I'm like, I can't just pull one goat. It's like the conversation before this World Cup. Is Messi the goat? Is Cristiano Ronaldo the right. goat? Um, it's just a conversation. We're so lucky to play in a, I was so lucky to play in a time where you did have a Marta, uh, Abby Wambach, a uh, Carly Lloyd, a uh, Christine Sinclair that literally changed the footballing game on the pitch to allow all of us to be so successful. So I can't give it to one, but if I had to, uh, Christine Sinclair, just a little bit. Hey, sports fans, if you want to see more conversations with athletes and stars, check out these videos right here and be sure to subscribe for more from USA Today Sports.